in my life I shall see what the Lord has in store for me and I declare I decree my result is victory in my life I shall see what the Lord has in store for me and I declare I decree my result is victory.
You are listening to For Amor Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. And yes, welcome to For Amor Radio. Thank you guys for tuning in to Good Life with Dr. Lori. I know it's been a minute, but we are here. When I say we, I'm talking about Dr. Lori and Overseer J. Evans. Oh, my goodness. Amen. In the house. In the house. Praise the Lord. It has been a minute. So you guys know during the summertime, our work schedule changes. I mean, it's all about being boss, right? It's about being the entrepreneurs. In the summertime, our schedule changes. We where we try to work as much as we can in the summer so we can knock out everything concerning our contract. And that's what we've been doing. But we got three days left, and we just decided to just come on today and uh, share some of this joy and this excitement and this enthusiasm that we have. We wanted to share it with you. So, Overseer, what do you think about that title today? <laughs> Turn down for what? Turn down for what? Uh, you guys know that's little John singing and everything. I had to look it up to really get an understanding of what he was talking about. And yeah, he's talking about weed and some other stuff in there. But he's basically talking about keeping the party started. And that thought came to me. Turn down for what? And when I started thinking about it, I started thinking about it in terms of... You know, turning down on God, you know, turning down your faith, turning down your worship, turning down your praise, turning down your love. For what? <laughs> right? Why Why would you do that? What could happen in your life that would make you turn down? Turn down for what? So we're going to be looking at that because as I was thinking about it, Romans 8 came to me. And when I started reading Romans 8. I walked away saying, turn down for what? For what? What's going to make you turn down on the Lord? Overseer, what will make you turn down on the Lord? <laughs> I, 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 hey, I don't know yet. I don't have it. It's nothing. <laughs> now, okay, I was about to say what you're saying. Look, you've been in this walk for 40-something years, and you ain't that. turned down. No, what no. would make you turn down uh, now? Nothing. No. nothing. Amen. Uh-uh. Well, guess what? Guess what? I know this is just a fun little title, but I want to tell you, God will never turn down on you. Mm. He'll never turn down on you. He promised that he will never leave you, never forsake you, no matter what you're going through. He's going to be there, right? Present and accounted for. He is our very present help in the time of need. Right? That could be a financial need. It could be a love need. It could be a marriage need. It could be any kind of need. Struggling with your children need. It could be any kind of need. But he said he's going to be there. He's going to be there. But this is what I want to start with. I want to tell you that God loves you. Mm -hmm. And this is the ultimate of the agape love, the Zoe love. This is the true, unconditional love. While we were out there in the world doing what we was doing, and we were doing some rank, messed up, debauchery. We was doing all kinds of horrible stuff. But John 3, 16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, Uh Uh-oh, shall not perish and have everlasting life, eternal life. Look, he loved you, he loved me while we were in the world. Hallelujah. So let me tell you something. When I say turn down for what, I'm telling you God is not going to turn down for nothing. This love that he has for us is an undying love. Love. Hi, Undying love. I want to just zero in on that love a little bit. I got Overseer Jay Evans with me. He's going to bring his perspective on this. But I'm going to read some scriptures and we'll stop and go as God speaks. Mm-hmm. But this really excited me when I started reading this. So I'm going to actually start with verse 28, a very familiar uh, oh, yeah. packet, pack package. <laughs> well, it's loaded. It's, it's a loaded package. package. But I'm going to jump right in right there with um, 
uh, Romans 8 and 28, but I'm going to be, I'm going to read it from the Amplified Bible. And I don't know, I might hit the King James, but we'll see. But I'm going to start right there. It says, we, start with we. Now, even though this, this, this was talking to the Romans, when you're reading the scriptures, the scriptures are talking to you as you hear God. There will be things that will elevate to you as you're reading the word. That's when he's talking directly to oh, you. Well, it's always good to know the context, who he's talking to, what time period, all those things. But as you read the scriptures... God will speak directly to you. To he word. will speak directly uh, to your situation, to your spirit, to your mind, whatever it is. So right here, when I read the word we, that was us. Mm -hmm. That was me. He said, we are assured and know that God being a partner in our labor, the, ver the word here says their labor, but I just changed it a little bit because this is the Amplified. Being a partner in our labor, we know that all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God Amen. and are called according to his design and purpose. The Amplified be making this oh, yeah. thing fire. Oh, yeah. Right? Amen. Amen. But blessing. he said, to them, those who love God. How do you know you love God? This is something that the Lord said. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. You'll do those things that I said. Right? right? Yeah, but yeah. here's the thing. He didn't leave you hanging. So you ain't out here trudging through this mud. I got to obey God. I got to obey God. He said no. He said that his spirit is in us to work, to work in us, to will and to do of his good pleasure. Yeah. So I want you to obey me. I want you to do my commandment. But I'm going to help you. Woo! Amen. I'm going to help you. What's your part in it? You just have to have a mind willing. You got to be willing to do what God wants you to do. He got the rest. If you willing to do it, he's going to help you yeah. do it. Being willing. That's the best thing. Willing and obedient. That's what he's here to help us do. So that's how you know you love God. Because you're willing to do whatever God tells you to do. Is it easy? Absolutely not. And you're you going according to his purpose. Amen. And not our purpose, but his purpose. What, what is his purpose for us? To, to worship him and be close to him and honor him in the midst of it all. Because it's going to work everything Everything. Going to work out for our good. And, and that means it. Keep a praise on. Mm. Hey, ooh, child, you already going there. We are going, child, listen to me. <laughs> Overseer, you already going there. But that's how you know you love God. Because you have a willingness to want to do what God tells you to do. Now, you got two things fighting against you. One is your flesh. Your flesh always wants to satisfy itself. Your flesh wants to do what it wants to do. God said there's nothing in this world except for the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. All of that's centrally located in your flesh. In flesh, yeah. That's your flesh wants to do, it wants to have what it sees. It wants to do what it feels, and it wants to be on display like it's something, like it's all of that. That's fighting against you, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. You're fighting to be a humble uh, person who who exemplifies the fruit of the Spirit in your life. But you got your own flesh fighting against That's you because right your word, flesh wants to be on display. Then you have, Then you have the enemy. He's opportunistic. He's going to come in where he can get in, mm -hmm. right? So if you in the flesh, he's that's where he's coming in and he's going to amplify that. He's going to make that about him, not you and not God, yes. right? So you got those two things fighting against you. But in the midst of that, if your heart's desire is to serve God, your heart's desire is to do what God wants you to do. Yeah, you might stumble and fall, but he said in Psalms, I think, 35 or 34, he said that though you fall, you will not be utterly cast down. Yeah. He Ooh, said man. he's upholding you with his right hand. Praise God. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, you, you might have a struggle here and there, but what you don't lose is that willingness to obey God. Yes. 
Don't lose the will to want to serve God. That's how you know you love him. That's how you know you love him. Verse 29 says, For those whom he knew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand. God didn't just start loving you when he saved you. He loved you long before oh, that. Man. He loved you when you was with that man that was not your husband. He loved you when you drunk that liquor all the way down to the last drop and was filthy, stinky, drunk. He loved you when you was on the crack and in the floor, uh, laying on the floor at the crack house. He loved you when you were stealing, looking around, thinking that ain't nobody seeing you take that money. Mm. He loved you. He loved you because he saw it all. None of this got past him. Mm. That sin came up before him and it stinked. In his nostrils. But guess what? He was still motivated by love. Love. To save motivated. He was motivated by the love that he has for us Mm. to save us. That's good for For those who he foreknew, of whom he always was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning for ordaining them. To be molded into the image of his son and share inwardly his likeness. Let me just stop right there. Oh my God. If you want to know what God is doing in your life, this is what he's doing. You may not understand this. I don't fully understand it all, but this is what he's doing. With everything we're going through, he's conforming us to the image of his son. This is taking place in our spirit, not in the natural fleshly Mm. part of us, because that's going to die. But what he's doing is conforming us to be like Jesus. He's conforming us to uh, have the fruit of the Spirit manifested in our life, right? That's what he's doing. Some people go through, and it seems like every day they're going through. Sometimes it's like just hard all the time, and you don't understand. God, I don't get it. That's because he's working some stuff out of you as he works some stuff in you. (laughs) What is he working in you? His Spirit, That's what he's working. The likeness of his son. That's what he's working. What is he doing with this stuff on the outside? Killing it. Amen. Killing it. Killing it. Because the the flesh will not serve us. In the end, the flesh will destroy us. So the thing is to destroy the flesh. Crucify the flesh. Mm -hmm. Put that flesh on the cross with Christ. Use your imagination. Use your... And see that flesh crucified to the cross. And see you walking in the spirit. Mm. Amen. Lord, Lord have I'm, mercy. I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Amen. You know, not, not, but Christ liveth in me. You, you have to crucify it. And it's a daily mm. crucifixion for that flesh. And that's what's happening. Yeah. If you want to understand what's going on in your life, this is what's happening. And I tell you one thing. If you feed that flesh, it's going to be a little hard to kill it. Because but yeah, you can't strong. feed it and you kill it at it. the same time. No, you can't feed it. Now you got to you got to feed the spirit of God with the word. You can't be in in that stuff that's going that the world offers mm, mm. because what the world offers it's it's, it's going to feed the flesh. Mm, mm, but the word of God is going to feed your spirit. That's good. That's good, overseer. Mm. Well, now we understand what's going on. This walk is not just it's not just happening. God is working. What he say in us to will and to do oh, of his good, good pleasure, thing, yeah. and he might become women of his son and share inwardly his likeness, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. Ooh, the firstborn. Mm. Amen. And that's something. It is. Yeah, the first that we're in that group. Absolutely. We're in that group. That's why yeah. I said when it first in, in the amplifier it starts off with we. He's talking about us. Mm-hmm. Christ is the firstborn of many brethren. He is the firstborn of us, right? But we might be the firstborn. You might be the firstborn in your family, right? You may be the firstborn in your friend group. You may be the firstborn on your job. So, And there may be others that come in as a result of you being in. And the, and the, you know, so now yeah. you're a type of firstborn. Yeah, because we're part of the body of Christ, body of bone in the flesh. The firstborn gets big blessings, mm. and we're part of him. So mm. the big, we get big blessings. Oh, praise and God. Blessings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A, a double portion. A double portion. Oh, blessing. Give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give <laughs> me. See, the world 
The world want to offer you a double portion, but it's a lie. Yeah. It's a lie. It wants to give you a big name, it wants to give you lots of money, it wants to give you the travel and the fame and the glory and all of that. Oh, yeah. And while you enjoy rejoicing and you're doing all this, the next thing you know, it's snatched out from under mm. you. How many people have we saw fall from grace? Mm. How many people have we saw just fall in general, chasing that dream? But it's a lie. Mm -hmm. It's a lie from the enemy. Mm -hmm. See, what God gives you, he doesn't give it to you. It's not going to cause you any issues. It's not going to cause yeah. you any stress. Well, it's going to be a blessing in your life. But what the world gives you, the world can take it away. Mm -hmm. One day they exalting you. One day they saying, oh, how awesome you are and how great you are. And the next day they're laughing at you. Mm -hmm. Laughing because you done got caught up. Or now, now you're not relevant anymore. Mm -hmm. How many people have we saw in the world who was started out good? One that comes to mind is Miley Cyrus. Not to throw off on her, but she was this little Hannah Montana girl and... You know, Disney and kids loved her and wor the world loved her, yeah, so right? She yeah. That girl, to remain relevant, she killed everything about Hannah Montana. Killed it. Mm -hmm. Killed it. Stripped it bare. Just so she could remain relevant in the eyes of the world. Mm -hmm. And now, she's neither here nor there. Every now and then, she'll pop up. Right, with something, yeah. some you know, there are some people that'll follow her, but she's neither here nor there. You see how they stay in the in the in the limelight when they're doing crazy stuff. They stay in the limelight all that time, but then when the world gets sick of you, all right, moving right along. Yeah, this, next, uh, yeah, yeah, next one, next, next one. Next foolish person. But see, in the kingdom of God, you're always relevant. Woo, my you're God. always relevant. Give me my bell over there. <laughs> 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 yeah, man. You are always relevant, and you don't have to do crazy stuff oh, to Lord. remain relevant. Thank you just you. have to do whatever God is leading you to do. And I'm going to hit that real quick, if you don't mind, overseer. I want to hit that about doing what God called you to do. Because sometimes people will contact you or call you, or, or, or maybe you in church, and they got this word for you, and they telling you what God wants you to do or what God said to do or what God told them to reach out to you for and all of this, you know, but yet when you hear it, it's new to you. It's foreign to you. God ain't saying ain't nothing seven. like that yeah. to you. you. The thought didn't even cross your mind, didn't even cross your path, nothing. So none of that was on your radar. So when you hear it, you're like kind of befuddled. You, you're like, um, okay, you don't want to uh, kick against a man or woman of God or whoever that's saying that, right? But I'm going to tell you now, you better stand your ground. Stand and you your, better yeah. go, you better say something like, well, you know, I hear what you're saying, but uh, God has not said that to me. So what I'll do is I'll pray about that and just listen for him to confirm that. If it, that yeah. be so, right? We cannot be afraid because people are people can be opportunistic if they're operating outside of the spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And they can say, they're quick to say, God said, or God told me, or God showed me. You know, I'm 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 I, I have accepted overseer that I am a seer. I have accepted that I am a prophet. I have accepted that. But I move careful in mm -hmm. that. Absolutely. Because, you know, I don't want to be telling somebody something that God said and it was it, not God. No, God didn't say. That's a dangerous situation. And people are quick to say, God said, uh, thus saith the Lord. Uh, like uh, in, uh, Ezekiel, always thus saith the Lord. Hey, that seemed like the word, but um, God's going to confirm his yeah. word by one or two, by more than one, two or three witnesses. Mm -hmm. And Ooh, also to yourself, yes. I'm telling you, he's going to confirm it. So just because a person tell you things, hey, you take it with a grain of salt. Say, mm. okay, all right. Mm. If, if mm. it, I'm not, I'm not rushing this. Oh, you have to, you, you need to do this now. Oh, no, sir. Mm. That, mm. That's, a, that's, that's a red flag That's there. right, that's right, that's right. That's one reason right there why you should turn down for nothing. 
right? Oh, you can God. you can remain excited and joyful in God because you know He got your back. He's always looking out for you to make sure that you are not deceived. Uh, Psalms one twenty one says He He guards your going out and your coming in, right? <laughs> He's guarding your going out and your coming in. That's the uh, uh, visual of the sheep coming into the pen at nighttime and being guarded from uh, uh, she, uh, um, wolves, wolves, you know, coming into the sheep pen. So he's guarding that sheep pen oh, while you in there in his presence and under his his watchful care. He's guarding you. But when daylight come, it's time for you to go out and graze. It's time for you to start walking around doing what you do. He said, but I still got you. Amen. My eye is still on you. I have my watchdog out there. He's not going to let you go too far because if you start going too far, he's coming running. He's coming running. Running. You don't know what that dog gonna do, so you get scared and start running back towards the shepherd, right? <laughs> so God know what watchdog to use in your life. You start getting too far out there in the world, all of a sudden something come a yiping and biting at you, right? What Ooh. do you do? You turn around and run back to the Lord. So He's keeping your going out and your coming in. That's he's blessing. watching over you. That's a promise from the Lord. Find that in Deuteronomy twenty eight. That's a promise from Him. Mm. That's that's a promise in uh, Psalms 121. Glory. Hallelujah. Yeah, I'm about to go speaking in tongues. I just, <laughs> we just cut that out. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Let's go down to verse uh, 30. It says, And those whom he foreordained, <laughs> he also called, and those who he called, he also justified. That word justified means acquitted, made righteous, putting them into right standing with himself. He declared you not guilty. And those who he justified, he also glorified. The word glorified means raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. Come on now. Yeah. Turn down for what? Oh, right? My. God not yeah, only called you, he justified you, he glorified you. Turn down for what? Why are you walking through this life looking like, what you say you've been sucking on lemons, looking <laughs> all depressed and tore up and messed up from the floor? You know what? Turn up. That's what you need to do. How do you turn up? You turn up your praise. You start magnifying, glorifying God. Why? Because what did he do for you? I'm going to tell you. He called you. Yeah. Then he put you in right standing with him, which means he justified you. He didn't stop there. He done glorified you now. See, we don't glory in ourselves, we glory in God. We glory in the fact of what God has done. God took me from being a miserable, poor, alcoholic, drunk, sexually perverted person, lifted me up, raised me up. He first, he declared me not guilty. I don't forgiven you now. Yes, you did all of that. But not only did I forgive you, but I cleaned your butt up. Oh, and man. I will continue to clean you. He said that uh, 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 you um, confess your faults, confess your sins, and he's just and faithful to forgive you, and he will cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Clean. That's ongoing, yes. because we still do stuff, and sometimes you just gotta stop and say, God, forgive me. Forgive me for everything that I did towards you in word, thought, and deed. Forgive me, Lord. Don't hold it against me. God, you know my frame. You know there's times when I can just be weak being a human being. But I'm grateful and thankful that you put your spirit in me so I don't have to stay in that place. Yeah. That I can be raised back up to the place I'm supposed <laughs> to be. Back to the glory. That's what Jesus said. Give me the glory that I had before I got here. Mm. Hallelujah. Now, now, now when, when Paul writes that in the, in the 30th verse there, mm -hmm. he writes it as the as a past tense. 
that is already happening. Yes. He says he called mm -hmm. you. Yes. And he justified you and glorified you. That's all has already taken place. That's not going to happen. In other words, you're not going to. In other words, you say, well, I've been called. Now I'm waiting to be glorified. No, you have already. You are glorified yes. now. Yes. Because Paul speaks of as in the past tense that this is something that has already been done. Yes. So you can, yes. You, 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 you can turn up. Turn down. Because, for what? because you are glorified. Yes, 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 yes. We already have it over here. Yeah. We it belongs it. to us. It's, it's, it's hard. It's yeah. mine. It's, yeah. it's mine. Man, I can see myself in the spirit realm just praising and rejoicing and just having a good time. I don't have to go to the club for that. I don't have to go to your backyard party. I don't have to go to your in-house party. I don't have to be around the liquor. I don't have to be around the drugs. I don't have to have none of that because I can turn up right here in the spirit, in the name of Jesus, and I can say to the devil, you know what? Turn down for what? There's nothing in this world that will make me turn down from the Lord. And listen here, I'm not going to even boast and brag like it's me. I'm not going to say, I, 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 because I understand if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? So I'm going to give him all the glory. I'm not turning down for nothing because of the power of God that is at work in me. He said, greater is he that is in me than he that's in the world. So if I keep in mind the greatness is in me that's from God. Wait, yeah. let me say that again. The greatness in me is God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. The Amen. power in me is Where God. Is he? The strength in me. in me is God. That's what the scripture says. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, who gives me the strength, the ability, the capability, the wherewithal to be able to do it. It's him. Yeah. It's him. It's not me. So when I say turn down for what? I'm talking about somebody that's got the power of God at work in me. Hallelujah. Yeah. And because of that reason and that reason alone, I don't have to turn down on God. I can keep this Holy Ghost party going. I can keep it going. So you got some issues going on today. You feeling sick in your body. Your mind may not necessarily be right. You struggling with mental issues. Let me tell you something. Turn up in God. <clears throat> Turn up in God. What do I mean by that? It means you run to him. He said the righteous run to him and they are safe. Ooh, you are safe. You're safe from mental illness. You are safe from de death and destruction. You are safe. See, when I say safe from death and destruction, I'm talking about death outside of Christ. Because mm -hmm. there's going to be many that's going to die in this world. And they're going to stand before God at the white throne judgment. Guess what? We don't have to be there. Oh, no, I'm sorry. There. I decline that invitation because I'm going to be at the Bemo. That's the only judgment seat I'll be at. As that's the judgment seat. Christ. And it will will not be about whether I'm saved or not. It will not be about whether I believe in Christ or not because I'll be at the beam of sea because I believe. Amen. You know? Now, of course, I, whatever he got for me that's on the positive side, I want it. So, let's work, walk this out on this side. That's another little reference to little John. Y'all, I do not know little John. I do not know, but I have to get this man his just due. That is his title of his song, him and somebody else, and, and walk it out. Y'all know that's one of my favorite, that we have to walk this um, uh, salvation out. And that's the word. I always said, look, John stole that from Jesus, Amen. right? <laughs> he said, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what that means. That means to walk out. Walk out what's on the inside of you. So kudos to the John for the titles. But I'm telling you, the power behind what I'm saying right now, that's our glory to God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. My, 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 Woo! my. <laughs> I said this out on my on my uh, messenger, and I'm pretty sure people will be like, "Woo, my Lord, boy, is she, your wife is fine. She is anointed." Well, I tell you what, I just feel myself in the Holy Ghost, and I I'm gonna tell y'all something. Shout out to um, Apostle Alicia, Alicia Biggers. I'm gonna say that again. Shout out to Apostle Alicia Biggers. She was on my broadcast. And she was talking about, you know, there's areas where every believer need to be delivered, right? Mm -hmm. And she said that's what she is. She's a deliverance coach. And um, 
I don't, um, I won't tell somebody to go to something or, you know, unless I know about it myself. So I got with her, met with her, and she did what she do, did as a coach. And she started talking to me. Man, it came up that I had some serious unforgiveness in my life. And it was towards my dad and my older brother and the coldness that had entered into my life at that time, you know, that it literally had shut me off from really being able to love, accept love, and extend love to people. But I didn't know it because I'm aware of the fact that God loves me, so I'm thinking I'm good to go. Man, we unplugged that thing, let that dirty water out, clean that tub out real good. I'm just saying, it's Amen. just an analogy, you yeah. know, and, and clean it out real good, turn around, plug it up, filled it up, now the water's all clean and crisp and, and, and good, and so now I'm able to flow better in love. I still need to grow more, but I'm able to flow better in love. There were people that were constantly telling me that they love me, and, and I believed it, but I just was like, okay, I ain't gonna get involved in that, <laughs> right? Now, I'm telling you, when that thing was unplugged, that unforgiveness was unplugged, and I let that thing go, God's love was able to flow in me better, so much better and I begin to extend that love to people and it just turned their life around praise God you know, amen amen so shout out to uh, Alicia Biggers because even though we're talking about this today talking about not turning down for nothing keeping the party and God going because you got more than enough to praise him for you may have some issues you may have some things that's going on so I suggest if you know if you have a pastor and you got some things that's got you stuck Talk to me. Talk to them about it. But if you can't get unstuck, honey, you gotta do what you gotta do. Amen. Again, her name is Apostle Alicia Biggers. Real simple ministry that she have. Just helping you to deal with stuff that you know you just swept under the cover and it's been up under there for years, right? She just helping oh, you yeah. to uncover that stuff. She ain't trying to lead you. You gonna do the leading. She just yeah. gonna help you understand what you're seeing and help you understand mm -hmm. what's going on. Man, and, I tell and, you. And like you say, there could be some brokenness in your life that you don't. You're not even well. Mm -hmm, Things mm -hmm. that been you blocked it out. Mm. Yes, but yes. I, thank, I thank God. Amen. And that's gonna show you. None of us have arrived yet. No, sir. We we still under the construction, so we can't point the finger at oh you. Look, and I tell you, you, you point that finger at somebody else. It's gonna come back. To, it's gonna come back on you. That's right. Because That's you, right. yeah, we haven't gotten there yet. That's right. Look born. at everything through the eyes of love as best you can. Yeah. Anything you can't see correctly, take it to God. Absolutely. Take, take, take it to God. Take it to God. If you if you're not sure about it, it's like God. What is this? You know, what is this they're saying? What is this they're doing? What is this? Because God is the only one can give you the truth behind what you see. He's the only one can give you the truth behind what you know. Because some people are charlatans, and they don't work hard to trick you. They don't work hard. Not, not you. People in general. Yeah. And they've worked hard. And then they're inspired from a from a demonic spirit. Mm -hmm. So anything you don't know, if it's real, if it's not real, ask God about it. Ask God Praise about God. it. Oh, Amen. Man. I just feel like maybe somebody needed that right now because, you know, to, to share that. But, yeah, shout out to Apostle Alicia Biggers. All right. So verse 31 says... Verse, so we know now we've been called, we've been justified and glorified. Overseer brought it to our attention that that's past tense. That's already done. You're not looking for this to happen. It's already done. My God, my God. This is only going to get better. Verse 31 says, What then shall we say to all of this? Everything mm. we just read. Here's what we should say. If God is for us, who can be against us? Overseer, I'm about to knock this out the park in the Holy Ghost right here. <laughs> oh, my God. Who can be our foe if God is on our side? Amen. Ooh, so my. when you start trying to threaten folks and speak curses on folks and this and that, you got to remember something. You don't fool with the people of God like oh, that. No. You might not like what they're doing, but you better you better twist your mouth and and, and, and close it like oh, Barney Five used to say, tick a lock. I don't <laughs> even know what that means, but I know this right here. It means shut your mouth when it comes down to trying to speak a curse on the people of God. Don't do it. Mm. Because if God be for me, who can be against me? 
Yes, yes, yes. Mm. Mm. See, we get attitudes with people, and then we start wanting to say stuff and do stuff. We got to be careful with that, Amen. because just like I'm saying that for my life, that same scripture applied to their life. We're talking about believers, right? Mm -hmm. And they, you, you know when you when you and and when you touch touch God touch God's people you touch in that's what that's what Jesus told Paul mm. said, you uh, you know you know, who are you I'm Jesus whom you persecuted and he we and we are the apple of his eye so you touch us you touch God's eye who you and you better be careful praise mm. the Lord Amen praise the Lord that's again let me hit that turn down for what you just found out you the apple of God's eye you are his people God is for you he's not against you mm -hmm. he's for you it doesn't mean he won't use a man or a woman of God to correct you to you to bring his chastisement through the word of God it doesn't mean that but what it does mean is that you know when he died for you this was not a game this was not a play thing mm -hmm. he literally was whipped and beaten and and stripped in the flesh. I mean, flesh was falling all over the places. They was beating him with the cat of nine tails. I mean, these 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 whips had little shards of bone in it that was gripping and ripping the flesh out. They could he feel it? Absolutely, he had to feel it. He had to endure this and go through this. Right, which is why he said, you know, you guys have not un endured sin unto death. Mm. Right. You have not, but I have. Oh, my Lord. I have. And because I went through that for you, this was not a game. This was real life. Did I feel them uh, 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 beating these yes. nails into me? Yes. He felt all of, all of that. Right. Do you have to go through that? No, you don't. No, you don't. You're, uh, you're saved now. Because you believe him. He paid the price. He paid the cost. Yeah, yeah. That's the good news. And the humility. The humility. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of this. Yeah. My God, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. That was verse 31. Mm -hmm. Who can be against us? Nobody can. No. That the enemy cannot come to the Lord and t and start to uh, 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 tear you down before God because whatever you're going through, when you gave your life to the Lord, He's committed to seeing you through. Now, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, He knows how to chastise you. He knows how to bring you out of that. Or He also knows how to leave you in it to save your soul. Is that scripture? Absolutely. 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. There's a man who was doing something he shouldn't have been doing. Paul said, turn him over to Satan so that he can be saved. What does that mean? I'm going to let you stay in the midst of what you're doing because ultimately it's going to save your life. Why? Because when you get burned by this thing, you're going to come running back to God. Amen. There's been a lot of ministers that we saw die in ways that perplexed us. Right? But what if what we saw, even though it looked as horrible as it did, you know, found in a hotel room, overdosed on drugs, it looked horrible to us. But God may have allowed that thing to go ahead on and fester and then take them out so that they would be saved. Amen. So that they would be saved. Not lost, but saved. Because these are people that genuinely gave their life to the Lord. Let me tell you something. We don't understand it, but that, that, that's that's God. God merciful. Yes. God's mercy. Yes, we don't. Understand but we don't take a it. chance with with His mercy and 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 sin against His His grace. You know. So you know, but things happen. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. It does. It does. It does. I just a lot of stuff we don't understand, but what we should understand in the end is that the people of God will be saved. Amen. That they will be saved. He called. Who he called Lot, a man that chose to live in the midst of debauchery, right? Even though he hated it. He hated it. He lived in the midst of sin, sinners, everywhere. He chose to live there. Mm -hmm. He could have left any time, but he didn't. He stayed there. But God knew how to preserve him. He knew how to bring him out, and he did. Yeah, now, yeah. He didn't come out without paying some costs. He lost some uh, his children. He lost some of them, and eventually he lost his wife. Her choice, but he lost her. So he did come out, but he come he came out losing some stuff, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Uh, he lost his town. He lost his home. He lost all of that. That, that was Lot's entire life. 
So when he left and he went to Zoe, I think that was the name of it, Zor. When he moved there, he didn't have anything. He and just nothing. had two daughters. Just the, what, the closing of the back part. That was it. Maybe, I don't know so that God knows how to bring you out. He knows how to bring you out. But now, he, you know, he's always giving us a chance to stop stuff because he gave us the Holy Spirit to empower us to overcome whatever. But if you feel like you can't do it, he ain't going to leave you. He ain't going to leave you. He'll bring you out. Verse 32 says, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Mm -hmm. Overseer, everything you need. And I like what you said earlier. You brought the scripture and you said everything we need to live godly in this world. Because you don't need everything. Amen. You don't need everything that the world is offering you. You don't need it. You got to desire and want godliness more than you want anything else. Yes. You got to want, if you're going to be in this world and live in this world, you got to want God's spirit. God, the manifestation of God in your life, you know, his godliness, the holiness of God, all of those things. You got to desire that more than you desire anything else. And then allow God, based on who you are in him and to him, I mean, you're his love, but he knows what's good for you in this life. That's right. For yeah. some, he will add uh, financial increase for some he will make have a great name he'll do that mm -hmm. right but you gotta let him do what he wants done uh, yeah. not what you want done amen right and he said um uh he, he's not gonna withhold anything i like this he said not also with him freely and graciously mm -hmm. give us all other things amen Freely. Freely. Amen. Freely. You ain't got to jump through hoops for it. You ain't got to get your grind on for it. And I know sometimes when people use the word hustle and grind, they're not necessarily talking about anything negative. They're just talking about working hard, paying the price, paying the cost. But look, outside of God, you, it's, it's nothing you Amen. should want. Amen. He delivered his son for us. For us. And with, with that, he can, he, all, all things, he gives us all things. If he, if he give us the main ingredient, Jesus, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. come on now. The other stuff is just a, just a drop in the bucket. Just a drop in the bucket. Amen. I like that. Praise I like God. that. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Woo. Okay, let me go. He says, who shall bring any charge? This is one of my favorite scriptures right here. Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? When it is God who justifies. That is, who puts us in right relationship to himself. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God, who acquits us? <laughs> who? <laughs> now, we've all done it. We've all accused somebody. We've all pointed our fingers and wagged our tongue at them and mm -hmm. did all of that and thank God for him correcting us or chastising us getting on us for doing that because one of the things that you know he's saying to us is who shall bring any charge against us who shall accuse us God justified us it's the same thing as that the Peter uh, on the on the on the rooftop and he said oh no no unclean thing that was dead in me he said what I've cleaned don't call unclean and he was talking to the Gentiles. So God had God had already dealt with the Gentiles. He already had cleaned them. So don't point your finger at them. Mm, mm. So, so we got to be careful. Like say, mm. who should lay in the charge in the that God elect? Mm -hmm. And that, see, that makes you think also, uh, Overseer. A lot of times we look at things that are going on in church. We look at how people are doing stuff. And we think, man, this stuff is so weird and this and that. But in the midst of all of that, there are some of God's people in there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. They may, they could very well be deceived, not know any better, but God going to bring them out. Because mm -hmm. I think it's uh, Galatians 3 that talks about if you're in error, he's going to bring you mm -hmm. out, right? It's just a matter of you spending time with God, listening to God, uh, learning oh, the word of God, and he'll begin to show you things that are not right. But, it could be a church that's really just off kilter, over to the left. 
But there could be some people in there that are real believers. He will use whatever he can use while they're there. But if they are, love him and are determined to walk up right before him, eventually he will separate them from that and yeah. show them that, you know, and move them away from that. So mm -hmm. I guess what I'm saying is that we can't be so quick to just want to talk about stuff we don't understand. Because even in the midst of that, there are people that are God's people. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, like yeah. you talk about the Catholic Church. There are people that are in the Catholic Church that love God and they are His uh, children. Absolutely. absolutely. You know, you know, a billion people, yes. Yeah. There's somebody that love, you know, yeah, they, they are. Exactly. Yeah. God, no, God, we look on the, I wasn't playing prayer, but God looks on the heart. He looks at the heart. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God, who acquits us? Verse 34 says, Who is there to condemn us? Mm. Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died, Woo! or rather, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God actually pleading? I love this. Actually pleading as he intercedes for us. The question is, he's saying, you know, who's going to condemn us? You think Christ's going to condemn you, but yet he died for you? Yes. He came to save those which are save lost. Save and seek. Yes. Right. So, you know, I'm telling you, if the enemy is making you feel like God don't love you and that making you feel like Jesus is mad at you or upset with you because you did this and that right there, I'm telling you that is the enemy. Yeah. That is the enemy. See, this is part of the good news right here. When he said, who is there to condemn us? Who can condemn us? The enemy? How you going to condemn us? You are condemned. Yes, he but is. But how are you going to condemn us when we are children of God? Mm. When we are children of Christ? Oh, because they sin. They did this and they did that. Well, I've made provisions for that. They have an advocate with the Father. <laughs> they have someone pleading on their behalf. They have an intercessor that's before the Father day and night pleading on behalf for the things that they do wrong. All I need for them to do is that I'm going to bring it to your attention that what you're doing is wrong by convicting you. I'm going to let you know that's not right. All I need for you to do is repent. Turn from that. Repent, Turn Daddy. back to me. That's what that means. Don't mean, uh, Lord, I repent. I, 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 I thank you for forgiving me. It means, no, stop what you're doing. Turn from that. Turn back to me. Mm-hmm. When that's you what, turn back to me, that's true repentance right there. When yeah. you stop doing what you're doing. If you feel like it's a part of you or it's in you and you can't stop, that's where uh, the apostle was talking about. We all got something we need to be delivered from, right? Yeah. And so th this is that thing you go to God and say, God, I feel like I can't stop watching this. I can't stop lusting after men or women. I can't stop this. Every time I see them, I'm just drunk. That's, that's when you go to God and say, God, I need to be delivered. I need this because this is a stronghold in my life. Mm. And I need for this to be brought out of me. Man. Not not me trying to deal with it. I need to kill this. It needs to be dead. Because Jesus went to an extreme. And I don't know the, the language to use to explain what he said. But he said, if your eye offends you, pluck it out. Mm. If your hand offend you, cut it off. Mm -hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, don't be playing. Yeah. Don't be playing. If you got something going on in your life and it's causing you to struggle in your walk with God or causing keeping you from God, you got to do what you got to do mm -hmm. to get it out. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go to the Lord, yes. Go to the and, Lord and, and tell exactly. him. Yeah. He, he knows how to. Because it ain't going to go away. It's going to get worse and worse. You got you to you determine, hey, I'm, I'm sick and tired of this. And we all get sick and tired of something that we were going yeah, through or been going through. That, uh, Lord, I need to be out of this here. Lord, help me. Yeah, that, I mean, there are get people me. that have all kinds of support groups and stuff. It's funny because these support groups are in the church. And it's where people have like sins. And they come together for support to help one another with that mm -hmm. pornography, uh, alcoholism, because you, you gambling addiction, you, gambling yeah. addiction. You got to learn how to live without that. If that's something that has been a part of you, like a part of your life, like a crutch, and that's what you walk with. When somebody take that 
crutch away, you got to learn how now to walk without that. Mm. When I was delivered from alcohol, you got to keep in mind, that was such a strong part of my life. It was a part of my identity. It was a part of my confidence, right? I could get start drinking and I became bold. I became, you know, I could act and behave all kinds of ways and mm. didn't care. Mm. Didn't care who I offended, who I made mad. It did not matter. But without the alcohol, I was quiet withdrawn, staying to myself, mm -hmm. right? Well, guess what? I don't drink anymore. Part of my natural personality is that of an introvert. But what I don't do now is I don't sit around depressed and upset and not knowing how to be around people and stuff like that. I can be the life of the party. <laughs> if God sent me there for that reason, yeah. I can be the life of the party. Uh, I can bring the energy. <laughs> Amen. 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 Turn it up. I can turn it up. I can turn it up. The only part I'm going to be turning up at is when the Holy Ghost is the, go is the host. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Verse 35. Verse 35 says, who shall ever separate us from? And that's what I wanted to get to right here. This is what a lot of believers need to know. He said, who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation or calamity or distress or persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword? Listen, these are all the things that as believers we might still encounter. We might still encounter suffering. We might still encounter affliction. We might still encounter tribulation. We might still encounter calamity. We might still encounter distress. We may still encounter persecution or hunger or destitution or peril or sword, mm -hmm. right? He said, who? shall ever separate you from the love, from Christ's love. Let me go ahead and read verse 36. It says, even as it is written, for your sake, we are put to death all day long. That's us. Mm -hmm. Dying in the flesh. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, Verse 37, amid all these things, we are, what does the Bible say? More than conquerors. Conquerors. And gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. So nothing can separate you from his love, but no matter what you go through, you are more than a conqueror. Oh, yes. You're more than a conqueror and Gain a surpassing victory through him who loves you. <laughs> so the fact that God loves you will help you go through whatever it is you got to go through and come out victorious. Yes. And I like that, that you say, here's all the things that's uh, what, but who is like an individual, a who. Mm -hmm. so, so, what, what 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 person is trying to separate you from the love of God? They can't. And then all these other things, the who, the what, mm, the revelation, mm, the distress, mm, the mm. persecution, the famine, the nakedness, the peril. Praise God. Those those are the, the what, the things that happen in our lives. Amen. Amen. And, and, just, and just because you may be going through that, that's not going to separate you from the love of God. Is still there. Yeah, that's the key right there because that's where the enemy comes in at. When we're going through things, he literally tries to make us feel like God doesn't love us. He makes us try to feel like he tries to make us feel like God is not there. He's not there for us. I know it's fine, it's fine, cause honey, that's the Holy Ghost. Woo! <laughs> Amen. Verse thirty-eight says, "For I am persuaded." Who is persuaded? Who is persuaded? Paul, Paul, said, Paul said, I, he says, yeah. I am persuaded. But overseer, you got to be persuaded. Yeah, that, that's right. Glory, it's personal. I have to be persuaded. To those of you that's listening, you have to be persuaded. What makes you persuaded? What the word says. Mm -hmm. What the word says. God will confirm the word in your life. But at the end of the day, Paul says, I am persuaded beyond doubt. 
I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation. This is some big language yeah, yeah, right yeah. here. Nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I'm going to ask you again, turn down for what? After you just found out there's nothing in our creation that can separate you from the love of God. All the way down from this life you're living now. All the way down to death. Nothing can separate you from the love of hey, God. How, is it, how important is it to know that God loves you? It's so important that no matter what you go through, you're going to be more than a conqueror. Yes, yeah. You're going to come out victorious. Why? Because if God be for you, who or what can be yes. against you, right? And if he's for you, you know that. No, not if. He is for you. Mm -hmm. And he's proven that by giving you Jesus Christ. Yes. Our Lord and Savior, our Messiah, our King, right? The life that we live. It is through him. through him. He overcame every single thing that the devil tried to, to, to destroy him with. Down to death. Praise the Lord. Down to death. He overcame death. Ooh. Right? And because he overcame death, guess who else overcomes death? We, we do. do. Yes. Oftentimes we're afraid. We're afraid of dying because of the unknown, not knowing what's going to happen. And then what's going to happen to our family? What's going to happen to our friends? What's going to happen? We're, we're, that's what we're, we're caught up with. Mm. But you literally can rest and know that even in death, nothing, yes. nothing can overcome you. And you know, and uh, and we we read about Paul, all these letters Paul writes, and and he said, "I am persuaded." I mean, he this he's the writer that we we're, we're looking at what Paul wrote and how the Holy Spirit is using him. He said, "I'm persuaded," and then he said, "Us, let's go separate us, mm -hmm. we you, me and you, me and you from the love of God. Nothing, mm -hmm. God love we can't get away from it." We, we're swimming. We're swimming in this love. Mm, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. So I'm going to ask you again, overseer. I'm going to ask you again, listener. Turn down for what? Turn down for Matter what? Matter of fact, you need to turn up. Turn up because God loves you. Mm -hmm. Turn up turn because up. in Christ you are surrounded with God's love. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But it's even deeper than that. Understand, when you was out in the world doing whatever you were doing, he loved you then. Damn. So why would he not love you now? He <laughs> does love you. And this love, knowing that God loves us, it affects our life. It affects the way we live. You shouldn't be living a uh, fearful, you know, f afraid, worried about people and what they say and how they going to act. And you just shouldn't be living like that because and, it doesn't really matter. And, and, and not only that, the least little thing that happened to you, you think you lost your salvation and you now you're on your way to hell. Mm. Come on now. Mm. Mm. Well, while you was in your sin, I didn't have any desire for God. I mean, it, it, it really, and I didn't have no conviction or nothing. Doing what I was doing, doing what you running doing. here and there, on, uh, smoking pot and doing what I was doing, you know, he loved me then. Yeah. How yes. much more now I'm in him. Yeah. Ooh. Hey, glory, hallelujah. Praise God. Glory, hallelujah. So I'm going to tell you I, you, I thank God for this uh, title today because now when you hear turn down for what? You're going to instantly be thinking about God. God, I ain't going to turn down. I ain't going to turn down. I ain't going to turn down on you, Lord. Matter of fact, I'm going to turn up. I'm going to praise you even more. Yeah. I'm going to praise you even more. That's why things like music, now, you know, you want to choose your godly music. You want to choose music that's word-based and everything. And there's some good music out there. Some of it is so good. It'll make you dance. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. It'll make you dance. It'll make you want to dance, right? But in a good way. David danced before the Lord, right? And I, ble- I bet he had a great time doing yeah, yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, he was it. stripping. How was his clothes coming out? He was taking his clothes yeah, off. All he had for that little, whatever he had for his yeah. under, 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 underwear. So, you know, enjoy yourself. Praise God. There are even some songs out there that met, weren't necessarily meant for uh, uh, saved people, but their message is good. You got to know how to convert that thing yeah. to a, 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 a godly message for you. Now, I wouldn't go and listen to Lil John singing Turn Down for what, right? But when I hear that in my mind now, I instantly think, God, I ain't turning down on you. Matter of fact, I'm about to turn up. I'm about to turn up. <laughs> Give turn thanks up. always. This always. is the way God in Christ Jesus concerning yeah. us. Praise God. Praise the name of God. And all right. things give thanks. This is the will of God. Amen. 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 And you know, uh, we, we all have things that happen in life. Some, you know, if you if we be honest, we really would not like to go through the bad part. We yeah. really wouldn't. But the truth of the matter is, just look back over your life. Look at everything you've gone through. Look at everything. But yet God still preserved you. He still guarded your yeah. life, watched over your life. He allowed certain things to happen. But when you look back at it, it was like, wow, if that had not happened. I'm telling you. You know, I wouldn't be where I am today. Absolutely. I, I wouldn't have what I have today if I had not gone through that. That's right. I wouldn't be able to minister the way I minister if I had not gone through that. Mm-hmm. Right? So just look back over your life. Look at what God has done. Look at how true the word is in your life. You went through something. An unsaved person went through the same thing. You came out victorious with a strong mind, and they battled in depression. Mm. They're battling depression. Now, you might say, well, I'm battling depression. But here's the thing, though. You win in the battle. Yeah, yeah. You win in the battle. You might be struggling with depression. You might be struggling with some kind of mental, uh, uh, you know, illness or something like that. But here's the thing. You're winning, though. Mm -hmm. You're winning this battle. It might not be lust for you. It may not be alcoholism for you. The enemy may just be coming for your mind. That might be the thing. Mm -hmm. But in the end, you win. You win. You You win. You are a winner. Mm -hmm. You take your mind back. You take your peace back. You take your joy back. Take it back. How do you do that? You run to your father, Mm -hmm. which art in heaven, not your father, the pastor. You run to your father, God. Yes. You yeah, run to your brother Jesus, which is the word of God. Ooh. And you say, Lord, I need my mind renewed. Mm. I need my mind restored. Be radical in your faith, asking God for what you need. And don't be double-minded. Believe that mm. not only can he do it, he want to do it. Can he can will he do it. Do it. Can he want to do it. Won't he do it? Yeah, that's a song. Said it? he would. <laughs> My God, thank you guys for tuning in today. Overseer and I just popped in to just share this message. Turn down for what? There's nothing in this world that should make you turn down on God. Matter of fact, turn up. And we just wanted to come in and share. We haven't been here. I haven't. Um, We've been going to work at the time I was supposed to come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, and and usually when I would get back in, just going live just to, you know, try to catch up with that. It just wasn't working for me. But we got three days left. Mm-hmm. Three days left. And then we will be, I will be uh, back on uh, in the morning time. So, Looking Amen. forward to that. But I just want to praise God for Overseer Jay Evans coming in with me today just to hang out and kick it with you guys. But you can catch him every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Um, Eastern Standard Time. Eastern Standard Time. You can catch him. You can go back and listen to his broadcast, The Word with Overseer Jay Evans. You can listen to it on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, Deezer, uh, Pod Chasers, Stitcher. Um, you can listen to him on all the major um, iTunes. You can listen to him on all the major platforms. It's it's um, 
the word with Overseer J. Evans. But you can also catch him on Live 365. If that's where you're listening, you can catch him on Live 365 every Wednesday. Now, he does fluctuate between 6 and 7. It just depends on uh, what's going on uh, at that time because, uh, you know, we do we are contractors and we have to go with the times that we're given. But, uh, yeah, so, and I'm telling you now, uh, if you thought the word was good here today, my God, when you listen to him, you can go back and just listen to him on demand. Uh, again, you can listen to him on Spreaker as well. Uh, Spreaker, go to Four or More Radio LLC. Bam, you can pull him up, or you can just go to the word with Overseer J. Evans and catch him on Spreaker.com. And let me tell you something if you are a lover of the word of God, no doubt. That's what you're going to get uh, with this broadcast. I love having him on because he brings another part to, uh, you know, the scriptures. He adds context and all kinds of things. So I love having him on. And I do appreciate you, Overseer, for coming uh, today and sitting in with me. I've had a wonderful time Oh, I had a good time, too. Today. All of you at Word was, uh, word was rich and, and rewarding. Amen. 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 So, Lord... Let me just say a quick prayer. Oh, thank you. Father. A, yeah. No, I, I was, uh, that's what I was in my mind, that you would pray. Okay, and that's I thank what God that, uh, you do. Hallelujah. That. Hallelujah. Father God, I thank you right now for allowing us to come here to bring this word, God. Although we use this title, Turn Down for What, Lord? I believe that, God, what you want is for your people, no matter what they're going through, to just continue to worship and praise and continue to walk in faith, continue to stay in the word, continue to declare your goodness over their life, no matter what. The Bible spells out that there's a lot of things that we can and will go through, but none of those things will separate us from you. None of those things will separate us from your love. And then, Lord, you said even in the midst of all of that, if you be for us, who can be against us? Mm. Who is there that can come against us, stand against us? Who can be our foe, God, when you are for us? Because you can't, they can't come for us. They have to come for you, not us. Uh, because, Lord, you're there. And so we thank you for that, Lord. And I just thank you, Lord, for all the listeners right now. Listen, God is trying to do a work in your heart first and foremost. He wants to change and transform your heart. Once your heart is changed, your mind will change. Once your mind is changed, your behavior will change. He sent you this word today for you to just be steadfast no matter what happens. Continue to just believe in him. Continue to have faith in him. Continue to trust in him. Turning down might mean you giving up or you walking away. He said, don't do that. Don't do that. Have faith in God. Have faith. And don't make it about a feeling because you may not feel good right now. But I'm telling you, that good feeling is coming. But if you just have faith, it's going to come quicker than what you could have imagined. Don't allow the enemy to lie to you and tell you, God is not for you. God is not with you. God is not going to help you. All of those are lies. God is with us, and it's not based on whether or not we're doing right or doing good. He said he chastised those whom he loved. So he will spank your butt if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing. He's going to get on you. He's going to correct you. He's going to discipline you. But he still loves you. He still wants you. He's still going to keep you and guard you and protect you. Go through whatever you got to go through and do it with joy, knowing that, God, you spoke to me today. I trust you. I believe you. I know you're here with me. And everything's going to be all right. So help me to go through what I got to go through because I'm coming out more than a conqueror. I'm coming out victorious. And it's all going to be good. No, let me change that language. It is good. Mm. It is good. So now we give you glory, Father. We thank you for speaking directly to the spirit and the heart of the listener today. We're going to go and just rejoice throughout the rest of the day, Lord. We commit our way to you. 
are going and are coming, we commit it to you. And we ask you, Lord, to have your way and let your will be done. And in Jesus' name, we pray. Overseer J. Evans, is there anything you wanted to say before we close? Mm-hmm. No, you said it all. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God for that. That, uh, that last part of word of prophecy that you were sharing with their listeners, I pray that they, that that who it was for they 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 will hear that word from God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. All right. Well, you guys be blessed. We're gonna get up out of here with a little bit of that breakthrough song. Y'all know I still like that song. Some folks probably like, why are you still playing that? I'm still playing it because listen to the words of the song. All right. So be blessed, and we love you. God bless you. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has in store for me. And I declare, I decree, my result is victory. In my life, I shall see what the Lord has. For me, and I declare and I decree my result is victory. Can't you feel it? Things are changing now, and walls are falling.
You are listening to For Amore Radio, your power station with powerful teachings from the Word of God.